visual um, because you can see how concentrated, how much of the solute, because the little white dots are supposed to be your solute. So it's the sugar, or it's the salt, maybe it's the Kool-Aid powder, whatever it is you're trying to get to dissolve. And so this is going to show visually that it's super saturated, super meaning above saturation. The very specific saturation point is anywhere along this line. Right? So it has to be exactly on the line, not above it, not below it. Um, if it's above or below, then it's either super or it's unsaturated. But to be saturated exactly, so like that sponge that you can't put another drop of water in without a drop of water falling out. That's what this line is trying to show. Unsaturated, remember that prefix un means not, so this is not saturated. And when it's not saturated, that means that it can hold more solute. Look at all the space you see in between. More of that solute, those white dots can fit in there to reach the saturation point. Um, I have, this is a little noisy, <clears throat> but I want to show you. If we think of these marbles like water molecules, Right? They fit right in here. When you have a solid, they're tightly packed and they can't move a whole lot. Okay? This is like a liquid. There is space between the molecules, and here in a minute I'm going to move them, and you can see how much more they can move compared to when it was a solid. But my point is that there, because you're increasing kinetic energy, which is motion, you're actually increasing the space between them. So you can see there's lots of space between them. So that means that solute can fit into those spaces. And so we said that the way that you can change or increase solubility is to stir it, which is increasing motion, which increases the space between the molecules, of water so that that's all you can fit in there. Or you can increase the temperature because raising the temperature increases kinetic energy, which increases the motion of those molecules or marbles. And then it allows the solute to be able to fit into there. So I just wanted to make sure that that part was clear. We're gonna have a whole unit. Um, we're gonna talk about it a lot next unit and then we have it with um, another unit also that we'll cover in the spring. So you don't have to worry about understanding kinetic energy and temperature um, exactly, just understand for this unit that anytime you have molecules that are moving, they're moving so much like this, that it allows there to be a lot of space between the molecules and then that solute can fit in there. All right. So the more space between, the more the solute can fit. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was yesterday I showed you the Grant, the, the cube of sugar, and it's two grams, and I measured out two grams of sugar into this little container. So um, I just wanted to kind of show you, you guys decided yesterday that the granules are going to definitely be the ones that would dissolve quicker. And the reason why we don't use these sugar cubes like at room temperature liquids or cold liquids is because it would take forever for this to kind of um, dissolve into our solvent, typically water, right? So the granules have so much more surface area because each little granule has six sides that are exposed to the solvent, where the cube has six sides total, right? If there's, I don't know, 5,000 granules of sugar in here, that means 5,000 times six to would have like those sides would be an exposed to that solvent. So it's going to dissolve a lot quicker with the granules than just with our sugar cube. Um, and so that's why, you know, we're usually not going to be using sugar cubes if we're dealing with room temperature materials or, or solvents. Um, somebody second period had a great, um, uh, I, I guess, example. They said, is it kind of like the beef bouillon cubes? Absolutely. If you've ever used the chicken or beef bouillon cubes, they look just like this. They're wrapped in that foil, though. If you don't have boiling hot water, it takes forever. And it still kind of takes forever for the cube to dissolve. 
They also have a little container now, here within like the last five or 10 years, where they have granules. So you can just scoop like a teaspoon out and it's the same you know, equivalency as a cube. And that dissolves so much quicker. And I never thought about it. And I even quit using the cubes because the bouillon cubes took so long to dissolve. Um, so I thought that was a great example. And then somebody else said that he will like take it and like cut it into quarters, like cut it into pieces. And I said, well, why do you think you're doing that? And he goes, well, I guess so that it can get more surface area. You know, so a lot of the things that we use in our daily life, we don't even realize that there's a science kind of foundation to why we're doing it. We just know that it makes it easier or it makes the faster or better for us. So um, I just kind of wanted to point that out, that that is something that, um, you know, we do use daily, or maybe not daily, but often, um, and it has that science foundation. So I kind of wanted to point that out for you. Um, all right, so when we're looking at the graphs, just be very careful, because we're gonna play a kahoot here in a minute. You have to make sure before you go and do anything that you are actually looking at the line that you're supposed to. So when you have a graph like this that has a bunch of different solutions on there, you have to make sure you're looking at the potassium iodine or the potassium nitrate or the sodium nitrate, whichever line the question's asking you about. Because obviously you're not gonna get it right if you're not looking at the correct line. And so that tends to be um, a, an issue. So, if we're looking at the sodium nitrate right here, anything above that we'll call supersaturated, anything below it, we're gonna call that under or unsaturated because it's under the line. It has to be exactly on the line if it's going to be saturated. All right, so that was just kind of a recap of that graphing business from yesterday.